nothing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Danny from On The Mend, and I don't know if you know this, but it's almost Christmas! It's definitely my favorite holiday. And around this time, I'm usually lugging around food and casserole dishes to all the fancy holiday parties and events I attend. So today, we are making this very convenient casserole carrier. Cute! That way, whatever you bake, if it doesn't turn out as appetizing looking as it's supposed to, it's okay. It still looks like a nice little present. And isn't presentation everything? Huh? Here's what you're gonna need. <laughs> you are going to need a three liter casserole dish, one rectangular panel of heavy cotton or quilting fabric in your outside print, measuring 16 inches by 31 inches, and another measuring 14 inches by 41 inches. You're going to need those same dimensions for your inside material as well. One rectangular panel of thermal batting measuring 15 inches by 30 inches, and one measuring 13 inches by 40 inches. A yard of cotton webbing or belting, 12 inches of Velcro, scissors, chalk, ruler or measuring tape, chopstick or pencil, iron, thread, and hopefully you have a walking foot. So first we'll take our first panel of fabric, place it facing up, and then take our second panel of fabric of the same size, and place it facing down. <gasps> Mistletoe, they're kissing! Oh, it's gonna be a long Christmas, guys. And we'll just match them up. And then we will take our batting and place it right on top of that. So there should be half an inch of fabric showing all the way around. And then we will pin it on the batting. So make sure when you're pinning all the way around to leave a four to five inch gap so we can flip it right side out later. So now we're gonna sew all the way around on the batting using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Don't forget to leave that gap so we can flip it inside out, right side out. It's inside out right now, right? God, I hope so. <laughs> Now, since this is technically quilting, <laughs> I'm using a walking foot on my machine. Uh, it makes things so much easier. I highly recommend it. So before we flip it right side out, we're going to cut some corners. So you're basically going to take your corner and just cut it down. And I like to do a couple more little slits. And we do this just so it lays a little bit better on the corner, so there's not all that extra material bunching it up. So for this last one, where I have the opening, I'm not gonna cut the notches, because we're gonna need that to tuck in to sew our seam. Now we're just gonna reach in and we're gonna flip this out. It's like a magic trick. It's Christmas magic. Eventually. And here is where we're going to need our trusty chopstick. So we'll basically stick our hand in here, find the corner, stick your <laughs> we're gonna stick our chopstick in there and force that corner out as much as it can so that way it lays flat now we're gonna do this to all four corners next we're just going to iron this and we're going to press our seams we'll tuck in these extra pieces on your gap. We'll press that and then this is right where we'll sew. Close up that gap. All right. Now that we've closed this gap, it's time to quilt. Now you don't have to do this. 
it's more for aesthetics. I think it looks a lot better this way. If you're like super stressed on time, like Danny, this was supposed to be a gift and it was supposed to be wrapped like yesterday, you're fine. They won't know. I'll know, but they won't. So basically, we're just going to sew straight lines down the panel with two inches in between. I have this handy dandy walking foot with a lever here that shows me right where to sew. And if I have all these gadgets, I might as well use them, right? And look, that's a lot of quilting. <laughs> All right, everyone, you know what's gonna happen next. We're gonna have to do the exact same thing to the other panels. Fun. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Let's get to quilting. You can do it, I'm, I'm done, I did mine. No? Okay. I'll do it, just like I do everything around here. What's next? Stop. It's handle time. All right, sorry. I get a little a little goofy around Christmas. Well, I, goofy or Anyway, we're going to do the handles now. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take our short panel, our Ernie panel cuz Bert's the tall one, so it's the short one. <laughs> and we're going to place it down and put the casserole dish right in the middle. So it'd be best to find the exact middle. Alright, not bad. So that way, when you fold it over, it's exactly where you want it. Next, we're gonna take one side, fold it over, and we're gonna make two marks. These are gonna be where you're going to put your handles. So go right here, right at the top, and right here, right at the top. This is where we're going to stop sewing. Do the same for the other side. All right, let's get those handles going. Next, we're gonna take your weave or your belting, your straps, and you're going to overlap the two ends by an inch, and then you're going to sew a zigzag stitch, two of them, side by side. That way it's unbreakable. Once you've sewn your strap, a good tip is to pin, let's see here, this is a long strap, is to pin the exact opposite point of where you just sewn. That way, both the handles will be the same length. Imagine that. <laughs> Next, we're gonna take our short guy, our Ernie, flip it on to the outside layer where you made your marks. Now we're going to take our zigzag stitch and our pin, and we're gonna place it right in the center of our marked spots. So we'll measure from there to there, 14. So seven is right, all right, seven's right in the middle. And I'll do three inches from the outside. So this is where I'll pin this. And then I'll come all the way up here to my marked spot. Three inches. And I'll pin that. And then I'll go down to this spot. Measure three inches. And pin. 
Now we're going to do the same for this side. So now we're going to sew, basically going to sew a long rectangle just all the way down to the end of the pin where you marked it, straight across and all the way back up, straight across where you marked up up here. And you do the same for the other side. Let's get sewing. And there we go. We've got our handles. It's a stingray. I don't I don't know why I turn everything into animals. I just I do that. Whatever. Next, we're going to attach our two pieces together. I need I need my Bert to my Ernie. Where did I put it? So, you're going to take your guy with the straps, a little shorty. Lay it strap side down, and then you're going to take your long one, and we'll fold it in half. We're going to place it directly in the center, measure each side, make sure they're all equal. And then once we have our center, we'll unfold this, and we will pin it. We're basically going to sew big square all around where the panels overlap. Then. And there you have it. They're stuck together forever. We're almost done. I know it got so dark out, so I put my lights on. <laughs> I used to call them willy willy lump lumps growing up. I was super cool. <laughs> Anyway, we're on to the Velcro, and then we're almost done. Let's go. All right, we're just going to unfold our almost finished casserole carrier. Throw our dish on there. And now we're just going to mark where we want our Velcro to be. So if I want it here, this will have to match up on this side underneath. You want it to fit kind of snug. We don't want any food spilling anywhere. And then here and here. If you messed up on an area, you probably want to tuck that under. <laughs> Just a little, little tip from me to you. <laughs> and this one will go right there. Perfect. Now we just sew or iron on the Velcro, whichever kind you got. And we'll be done. So to attach the Velcro instead of pinning, I'm going to use some wonder tape. So that way, pins just get in the way. If you're ironing it on, obviously you don't need it. So we're just going to place them right where they need to go. Make sure you match the uh, scratchies with the fuzzies and vice versa. Oh, you know what I mean. There. And the last one. And now we'll just sew and we're good to go. go. And alrighty Rudolph, she is done. Just unfold it, make sure our dish fits in here. <laughs> it's always a little bit of a gamble. One in, one in. There. Like a glove. And there we go. We are all ready. Now all I need is some food in there. I don't know, maybe some Christmas cookies or ooh, mac and cheese or mashed potatoes. You know what? I need to eat. So I will see you next year. And from me to you. Happy holidays from On The Men. Oh.
Oh, you're not doing so well. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>